Well, my guest is one of a handful of people who is trusted by virtually every side in the complex Middle East. The Reverend Canon Dr. Andrew White has been awarded several significant prizes for his peacemaking efforts. Having worked many years in Israel and Palestine, he negotiated the end of the Bethlehem siege in 2002. Remember that? He now works also almost exclusively in Iraq. It's always a delight and a relief to get him back here. You may know him as the vicar of Baghdad. Welcome, sir. Good morning, my friend. Oh, he's always so calm. It just blows me away. The man who's kept partly by 35 bodyguards and, and God. And God? I, God, in a huge way. He's I, very I, good at I that. want to ask you, uh, how grieved is your heart over Syria today? Syria is a horrendous situation. But sadly, Syria is just the worst of what is happening in the Middle East. Throughout the Middle East, we've got a major breakdown in society, community, politics, religion. And what is happening in Syria is really difficult because there's no good side. Mm. You know, the rebels are mainly Al-Qaeda. We say we're supporting the rebels, yes. That's what America did with the rebels in Afghanistan. They became the Taliban. They came back and did 9-11. So you've got to be very, very careful. And we are being asked to go into Syria and do things there. We've got s just shattering numbers, 1,400 killed, yeah. 400 of yeah. them children, 2,102,582 refugees, according to the UN. We today. have over 700,000 Syrian refugees in, in Iraq. Iraq. In Iraq, it's one of the biggest yes. retreats, isn't it? And they're all living in their tents, terrible, circumstances, but every tent has a satellite dish to watch television. You are kidding. I'm serious. Really? Yes. Television is such a big thing in the oh. Middle East that they even had their satellite dishes in the refugee camps. Well, you are a man full of surprises. You actually worked with Bashar al-Assad. I worked with him. The president of Syria. He was an eye surgeon and I was his anaesthetist. Boy. So I put his patients to sleep. He removed their cataracts. And now he's the president. He was not a very good eye surgeon and he's not a very good president. You are the man, you actually have a new book we'll be talking about in coming weeks, Father, Forgive. You are all about love and forgiveness as the power tools that Even allow... Even Assad. Well, here's my question. What, what would you do to... I mean, I wonder if we're going to be accountable as our brother's keeper for this atrocity. What, what would you do if you had the opportunity? If I had the opportunity, and I may well have it, I would sit down with him and try and show him the love of God. The president of Syria? Yes. I would go into that meeting, like so many meetings, and I would say, Holy Spirit, tell me what to say. You have had profound profound, remarkable success at this. And you've made some very interesting inroads. Even here, while in Canada, you have visited with John Baird. We have a photograph of you in Ottawa. The foreign minister is very significant to our work. He's actually been to our church. At St. George's in yes. Baghdad. Me, he came over to our church and he had lunch with us. Wow, lovely. And Good. Um, 
We had a very good relationship. We're working increasingly with the Canadian government in the reconciliation work. And we're looking at things that we can do with them. One of them is we're looking at the way we can create a closer relationship between the Israelis and the Iranians. Wow. Bring That's them to meetings things. together. You, you have a good relationship too and a strong supporter in the Archbishop of Canterbury in England. Well, the new man on deck, there he, he is. He used to be my colleague. <laughs> He opened St. George's with me. I mean, literally my colleague. Hmm. I was his senior colleague, and now he's <laughs> my boss. No. He used to be Justin, now it's your grace. Well, it's all good. And God his son it all. is now one of my assistants as well. I have to ask you about this because it's hot off the press. Yesterday, uh, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani released 11 political prisoners, uh, three men, eight women. He seems to be looking for a new relationship with the U.S. He wants these Western sanctions to, to end. He's a totally different person. And I have said from before he was even elected, if this man could become the president of Iran, everything will change. But the West has to believe that it can change. We can work with him. He's coming to New York next week, yes. meeting with to the, the UN. UN. This is hopeful. You're, you're hopeful. I'm hopeful about him. Am I hopeful about the Middle East generally? No. What, what can Jesus, you? God yes. says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Whenever he says pray for something, he means work for it. It doesn't mean you're going to get it. You go around to all these churches, oh, we want revival, revival is coming. But in the Bible, it tells us in the last days there will be wars and rumors of wars and everything will be terrible, but God will be there. Well, you're That's not giving up. That's what we've got now. You're, you're not giving up. No. White. You are actively moving forward in a direction yeah. of peace and reconciliation. Absolutely. So we will pray with you to that end. Good. That's what, that's what we can do. That's right. We, people will say, how can we help you? I say there are three Ps. We need prayer for these three Ps. Peace, protection provision and perseverance. Well, I hope our viewers, I believe they will commit to that. You'll be back. You'll be talking about forgiveness. And uh, thank you. Thank you for trusting God in all of these really scary places. God bless They're you. They're not scary because perfect love casts out all fear. And we have perfect love. Love of Jesus and love of our people. Well, we can all learn from your example. Thank you for coming.